Hello and welcome to Resource Review here at the Science Museum in London. We're your guide to the essential resources that could make a real difference to your teaching. Today we're focusing on secondary modern foreign languages. Subject specialist recommending today's resources is Ruth Wilkes. Ruth has been a deputy head and head of MFL department and is now an MFL advisor for Buckinghamshire County Council. Alongside Ruth, we have Adrienne Jones, a freelance education consultant and former primary school teacher and LEA advisor. And we have Ray Barker, director of the British Educational Suppliers Association. Well, thank you all very much for coming. Ruth, as our secondary MFL expert for the day, you've selected three resources for us to discuss. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit more about this first one, Cartouche Developing Spanish. Okay, well, Cartouche is um, a multimedia software tool and um, begins with Composer, which um, allows students to create their own scenarios and uh, uh, sort of in, in, a very, in a very imaginative way, allows them to develop stories and so on, and then obviously in, in the case of developing Spanish, um, pupils are able to create language as well, which brings those stories to life and you know, uh, follow up with, with work in the classroom, all sorts of recordings and so on. Thank you very much. To see Cartouche in action, we gave the resource to Chris Hart, who is the current holder of the Teacher Training Agency Award for Outstanding New Teacher of the Year. Let's see how he got on. Hola, there are two parts to Cartouche. There's the, the initial part is Composer, and Composer is basically um, what you see when you, when, you, when you load up. You can import characters, you can import backgrounds, you can import props, but they are not specific to any curriculum area. So you can make storyboards basically up from the top of your, off the top of your head. If you buy the modules which come on top of that, for example, developing Spanish, then you have some predefined pre activities in Spanish, um, and they might give you the beginning of a storyboard, and you have to develop it from there. And they'll also have a word bank with all of um, the vocabulary necessary. So it's very curriculum specific. Um, you have to drag uh, people onto the screen and make them speak using the speak bubbles and type into them what you want them to say. And then you can add sound by adding text audio. I think the most positive thing about Cartouche for me was the very visual and auditory. Um, input and output that you could get from it. So the children could listen to um, authentic Spanish being spoken, but they could also put in their own Spanish, they could do the voiceovers, and they could, it was very individualized and quite creative. Me llamo Luisa. Muy bien. There is a lot to do with in Cartouche, which doesn't necessarily help my objective of teaching and learning in, in Spanish, because you can do so much by playing around with the characters, playing around with the background, which it can be a little bit of wasted time, if you like, um, within an hour's lesson, for example. Hola, me llamo Carlos. ¿Qué tal? Right, well, Ruth, if I could come to you first and pick up on, I think, what's a very important point that Chris raised. Cartouche seems like an awful lot of fun, mm -hmm. but how much Spanish are the pupils really learning? Well, I think engagement is a big issue for all teachers, and perhaps in particular teachers of modern foreign languages, who've long struggled with the idea of getting students to really engage with lessons and take a real interest in what's going on in what could be a fairly sort of distant-seeming subject. So whilst I take the point that, that pupils are spending some of their time on creating the stories and making use of the image and so on, they are nevertheless engaged in that process, learning skills in ICT as they go along, but also um, using things that they, they have anyway, have gained anyway from their um, recreational use of ICT, um, therefore feeling quite confident, quite comfortable, and that's a good lead-in then to be able to use language in a way that motivates and, and engages their interest. Mm. Adrienne, what were your thoughts seeing the film there? Did you like the way developing Spanish engaged the pupils? They were obviously keen on using it and enjoyed that element of creativity and having the chance to do that. And I liked the way that it projected onto a whiteboard so that you can actually see 
large, you know, the, the sort of small bit that you've been working on. Ray, Cartouche is a very broad resource, isn't it? It's not just the Spanish. No, indeed. I mean, it's a, it's a multi-award winner. I mean, everyone perceives it as being a terribly innovative product and it is um, intensely creative in what it tries to do. So you can also get cartoons for Shakespeare, for primary, for secondary, all sorts of things. But it works on the same kind of principle and, and that's its joy and also probably the way people criticise it as well. It's an authoring tool and it, 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 it leaves the creativity to the people who are creating it. And, and that's where the danger is to a certain extent in, 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 in leaving kids to do things because you're never quite sure I think, well one of the criticisms is, is, is how much they're actually getting from it because maybe there's not enough structure for them, they're having a fantastic time, they're learning a lot of other skills but actually you have to be very tight with it I think and the teachers who are very tight with it have a very firm objective um, you know, and, and use it in a very creative way, get a lot from it I'm sure and those kids seem to be doing that. Well, thank you very much. Now let's move on to discuss our second resource for today, and that's iCafe. Ruth, tell us a little bit more about this. Right, OK, well, iCafe principally is a subscription website and, uh, on which learners can access texts in either French, German or Spanish, um, which are not only up to date, but also related to the curriculum and, it's hoped, with relevance to the learners themselves. Uh, this uh, CD-ROM is a... Um, a range of archive materials which have been on the website and now been replaced by more current articles. Okay, well thank you very much. Let's now see iCafe in use and we'll go back to St Robert of Newminster School where Chris is using the website. Now this is the hard bit, i hyphen cafe, c-a-f-e. And then if you press go, this morning with Year 10 we used a website from Oxford University Press um, called iCafe and the idea behind iCafe is it's kind of an online magazine um, available in French, German and Spanish with articles which are pretty up to date um, with associated activities such as crosswords or quizzes um, there are also um, some activities where they can send their answers back to OUP and possibly have them published on the bulletin board. So particularly today we've been looking at the Francais version of iCafe, so if we click in there we're giving a, 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 given a kind of menu and in the Francais section we've got um, different articles that we can have a look at. If I choose for example the top news story which is about um, Ellen MacArthur, when you click on the key it will bring you up some vocabulary. Now there is, for me it's quite a long article and there is very, very little vocabulary to support it. I think they could do with a more extensive vocabulary list. There are some really nice activities like the word search activity I thought was, was great which is you, you, click on, you click on there and you just type in your answers. So it's quite nice, it's quite nice and interactive. Well I think it's easier on like the websites there because I use websites quite a lot at home and that. So like it's a different way of learning which like makes it a bit easier and a bit more interesting. And um, when it's like with a textbook, sometimes it's a bit boring. And like, I don't know, it's just a different way of doing stuff. Because I wanted to try this as a whole class activity, it was the comprehension aspect which I was interested in. Um, and then I asked them to become experts in their own chosen article in a kind of mastermind quiz show type way. I wanted them to write down 10 questions that they would happily be asked on. Um, to make sure that they'd basically, basically to make sure that they'd understood the article and taken out all of the information from it. And finally, to become this evening's mastermind, why? Because it had a reading on the Richter scale of 9.5. Excellent, thank you very much. Well, Ruth, we saw Chris using iCafe there for individual learning. Is that the best way to use this resource? Well, it's certainly uh, an important way and a way in which it's intended for use. Um, but as well as individual use in, in the classroom, the students can actually use it at home as well to develop learning independently for homework and so on. Um, also, a teacher could, in theory, use it with a, with a whole group um, projected onto a whiteboard. Um, we'd have to wonder whether the, the text there looked quite small, whether it would be readable yes, it was quite by the dense, whole class. Wasn't it? Um, yeah, but certainly using it. Um, in, in the way that we saw Chris using it would, would be probably the most obvious use. Now, why online magazine reading? Why not use paper-based French magazines, for example? Well, I think one of, the, one of the learners herself made the comment that um, you know, young people today are used to accessing websites for all sorts of information. 
you know, whether it's uh, reading um, things that they're interested in, finding out things for school, looking things up and so on. It's a, it's a medium that they're very familiar with, very used to, uh, very confident with. Um, and I suppose, you know, it's a, it's a job of, of education to make sure that we're, that we're keeping up with what, what learners like to do and what they feel happy doing. Um, also, it has the, the, the interactivity to it, which a paper-based resource doesn't. We did see um, learners filling in answers on, on screen. Oh, yes, some games and things. Yeah, and, um, you know, having some feedback as to, as to whether they were right or wrong. And I think Chris mentioned that they could post their own work as well and perhaps get it on the bulletin board. So it has got that feeling of connecting with the wider world outside the classroom. Adrian, what were your thoughts about iCafe? Ooh, it's another website. To be fair, though, it is a website that has a structure and it does have confines. So it doesn't mean that you, you know, a student goes onto it and they don't just go anywhere. However, when I looked on the website at one of the sample pages, uh, it had content from three years ago on it and it did raise a question about how regularly it was updated given that it promises hot topics which are of relevance to young people. I see this as a, a supplementary resource to one of those big schemes. I think most people who are doing you know, language to GCSE will have a big scheme somewhere. Um, and you know all of the ma major publishers have them, and and this would give that a sort of certain level of authenticity to the work that they do in those big schemes. So mm. it's it's a kind of add-on, and will add some interest to it, but it's not something that you would do all the time. No, I, I, certainly not. I, I, no. I think. Well, thank you very much. Now let's move on to our third resource for secondary MFL. Ruth, tell us about it. Well, we've been talking about, about websites and their attraction to learners and indeed to teachers as a resource for authentic material. Um, there are a whole load of things out there and one which um, I've had a look at recently and selected is one called Mille Film, um, which allows learners to look at literally thousands of film clips, very short clips. They're, they tend to be um, the sort of thing you see in the cinema advertising the, the next coming attraction. So they're quite exciting, quite engaging. Um, teachers have, do have to do a bit of sifting through first, so there is a bit of work on the part of the teacher in terms of selecting which ones they want their, their learners to look at, depending of course on the, on the age and ability of the learners. Um, but some of them are films which are well known to children, but uh, dubbed into French. Others are French films, authentic French films, and they go back over, over a number of years, so a lot of classic films can be found up there too. And they do contain, you know, short bursts of language, a bit of music, exciting graphics and so on, and are really quite engaging to look at. So that then, you know, the teacher can use that as a resource to develop some activities uh, following on from that. Sounds very appealing to learn. It is, it is, yeah. yeah. To recap then, we've been looking at three resources for secondary MFL today. The first was Cartouche, Developing Spanish, published by Immersive Education. Secondly, we looked at iCafe, an online magazine from Oxford University Press. And lastly, the website Mille Film. Now, for more information on all of the resources that we talked about today, and to post your own comments about resources for secondary MFL, you can go to our website, that's teachers.tv forward slash resource review. Or if you want, you can email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. I'd like to say a big thank you to our panellists for today, to Ruth, to Adrienne and to Ray. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye bye. <laughs>